The K basins are two indoor concrete pools attached to closed nuclear reactors that were once used to produce plutonium for national defense. The basins are located near the Columbia River, about 35 miles north of Richland, Washington, on the Department of Energy's Hanford site. Each basin is roughly one-third the size of a football field and 20 feet deep. For many years, the basins held the largest collection of spent nuclear fuel of any Department of Energy site in the nation. Spent fuel is fuel that has been irradiated in a nuclear reactor, making the material very radioactive. Department of Energy contractor Floor Hanford finished a huge project that removed 2,300 tons of spent nuclear fuel, nearly 5 million pounds, from the basins in 2004. They dried the fuel and placed it into safe storage in a large facility in central Hanford, safely away from the Columbia River. During the spent fuel campaign, Floor Hanford workers removed more than 50 million curies of radioactivity which was 95% of the radioactive material along the Columbia River. Then they welded permanent covers on the fuel casks. The fuel corroded as it was stored underwater in the K-basins. It formed sludge. Sludge is a combination of dirt, sand, rust, chemicals, fuel corrosion products, and decay or fission products. It is very radioactive. The sludge can be dense and heavy, or flighty and swirling. The sludge coated basin walls, floors, tools, equipment, and other items that were placed in the K-basins over the years. Both basins together contained about 70 cubic yards of sludge, enough to fill 10 standard dump trucks if the sludge were dry. More than three quarters of the sludge formed in the K-East Basin, Floor Hanford worked with the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and the Department of Energy to define the path for removing and carefully handling the sludge to protect workers and the environment. Floor Hanford workers began vacuuming sludge into underwater containers in the K East Basin in late 2004. Capturing sludge as it swirls through the water in the 1.2 million gallon basins is very challenging. Workers compared it to chasing smoke. Operators standing on grating above the basins use long-handled tools to reach into the water and vacuum the sludge. Sludge particles in the basin water make it very cloudy. Workers have to lower cameras and lights into the Key East Basin to guide their work. Late in 2006, they captured all of the bulk sludge in that basin in four large underwater tanks. They also prepared to capture the smaller amount of sludge in the K West Basin in similar tanks. Solid waste pieces called debris were found in the sludge or covered the sludge. Some debris pieces were tiny, but many were very large. Workers began removing debris from both basins in the winter of 2004 and 2005. Debris removal was very slow, careful, and precise work. Workers discovered so much debris in the K basins that they convinced floor management to pause sludge pumping for several months so they could remove debris. The debris was blocking their sludge pumping efforts. They removed tools, equipment, empty fuel canisters, canister racks, canister lids, pumps, hoses, and a variety of other objects. They also removed hundreds of fuel racks that weighed up to 600 pounds each. The work was very complicated. Sometimes it took a crew of 15 people to remove a single large fuel rack. Small debris brought its own challenges. Often it was hard to separate small debris from the sludge. In total, Floor Hanford workers removed nearly 300 tons of debris and fuel racks from the K-basins an amount equal to more than nine fully loaded large size moving trucks. The debris was placed in large metal burial boxes. Some of the boxes have already been filled with cement and disposed in Hanford's large line waste disposal facility. Workers were involved in every step of planning and conducting the sludge and debris removal work. Crews devised an array of new tools, attachments and methods to retrieve sludge and debris. One such attachment was called the hat box because it looked like an old-fashioned hat box. 
Despite the difficulty of sludge and debris removal work, employees have maintained a strong safety record. Active employee safety councils work with management to make safety a priority, reward safety, and strive for recognition in the Department of Energy's Voluntary Protection Program, a challenging safety system. To remove the sludge from the tanks in the K East Basin, workers constructed and tested a specially engineered hose-in-hose -hose system. They began operations in the fall of 2006. The system transfers the sludge through a pipeline for nearly half a mile into underwater tanks in the K West Basin. The hose is a double-walled line of steel-reinforced rubber. The diameter of the inner hose is intentionally very small to obtain the velocity needed to keep the heaviest sludge particles moving. The sludge is kept moving through the line by four pumping stations along the way. The pumps maintain pressure and high velocity in the line. Traveling at about 16 feet per second, a particle of sludge makes the journey between the two K-basins in just under three minutes. Transfer of the K-Basin sludge through this system is a first-time activity using unique transfer technology. Floor Hanford workers carefully check the system so that it runs safely and efficiently. All transfers are scheduled to be completed by May 2007. After collection of all the sludge in the K West Basin, the sludge will be sent to a treatment process. The safe and robust process will heat and stir the material under controlled conditions. During the process, any residual uranium metal in the sludge will oxidize to stable uranium oxide. Workers will then mix the sludge with grout and harden it for disposal in drums as nuclear waste. Stabilizing the sludge will safely prepare it for transport, long-term storage, and disposal. A small amount of less radioactive sludge from the K East Basin was transferred to tea plant in central Hanford in 2005. It was mixed with grout and hardened there. Hanford site plans call for the K Basins to be demolished as part of the overall cleanup of the Columbia River corridor or shoreline. After the sludge and significant debris are removed, the basins themselves meet standards for low levels of radioactivity. While water fills the basins, it provides shielding from the radioactivity. However, before the basins can be emptied of water and exposed to air, they must be made less radioactive. Therefore, certain portions of the basin walls and floors will be scrubbed with high-pressure water jets to scrape off a thin layer of radioactive contamination. This technique is called hydrolazing. Workers using the hydrolazing system, as shown, will scrub some of the basin concrete to varying depths as needed to lower radioactivity levels. Then they will collect the bits of blasted concrete underwater and dispose them properly according to their levels of contamination. Then the basins and any remaining equipment and debris that qualifies as low-level waste will be transported and buried at a disposal facility in central Hanford. Floor Hanford, the Department of Energy, and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency are working hard to clean out the K-Basin safely and efficiently to assure that the Columbia River and the region around Hanford is protected.